protocols that have so far been established in the interest of time. First of all, let me extend my sincere gratitude to His Excellency the President for appointing one of us, my friend Fred Outa, as ambassador to the Great Republic of Egypt. Fred, I know you at a personal level for a long time. I know you are somebody of great dedication, great commitment, and I know you will serve this country with great zeal and commitment so that you can facilitate upscaling of the relationships between our great Republic Kenya and the country of Egypt. To those of us from this region of Nyanza, those of us from this region of Nyanza, through you, Honorable Speaker, let me state categorically that we owe His Excellency the President a great debt of gratitude for this appointment. A great debt of gratitude for this appointment. And to our brothers and sisters who are on the verge of joining government, who are actually cast the signets alongside Senator Outa, we also wish you the best and we believe that in the not too distant future you will be able to assume those positions so that you augment the efforts of His Excellency the President in building this great country, Kenya. Jothuwa wa chokama. Aduoko ninya saero kamano. Mumi ya watuwa lomo ndu wabikai. Enyasi mara uta kai. Outa koro dibeta ambasada, usebeta siyasa makisumo ka aminga, koro dibeta ambasada, representative mar Kenya ka e, pinyo mar Egypt. Outa enja teach, en nga maja kinda, kendo wangeyo niko di Egypt kucha, gimora mora mo yudo kuno manya lo konyo jothuru wakai, ubro kelo thuru wakai. So Fred, I want to wish you the best, Fred. We believe you are equal to the task, and we believe that any opportunities that you get for this region and for Kenya as a whole, you will bring it back home. I don't want to run the risk of repeating what has been said by the previous speakers. Today is your day, Ambassador Uta. We are continuing to pray for you. We wish you the best with those many remarks. It is my great honor and privilege to invite the speaker. CSICT, Mweshimewa Walo, Rafiki Yangu, Fred Outa, now Ambassador. Wenanyegu Manyaru Atano. Na ukienda misi ruwambie hapa kano, tukona maji ili atuwezi kutumia. Wachukue mingi wapande na ae rais waturudishie. Uh, Ambassador Fredo Uta, God had prepared you for the job that you have been given. When David's job was to kill Goliath, God sent him out there into the wilderness to get familiar with the lions, to kill flying birds with slings, so that you would use that. Very early in your life, Mweshimiwa Uta, ulitumu America to stay away from your family, from your friends, and do duty. It is only God that was preparing you for that duty. I want to take one more minute to thank Waziri Owalo. The many people who have been counted here as laws in government were taken there by Waziri Owalo. Owalo, I will always thank you every time we get an opportunity to say so. Finally, and most important, Ambassador Auta is not going to be ambassador of UDA. Ambassador Auta is going to be the ambassador of the Republic of Kenya in Egypt. I had noticed you had invited everybody from all political parties, but I have noticed some of us are not here by way of party affiliations. They will come to Egypt, welcome them, show them that political party lines cannot divide us. So the president is in the United States with all political parties. We are going to show those who think we can divide Kenya along political party lines that we in UDA are not going to accept that. Finally and equally important, I know many of our people have been making so much noise that the president used a private jet to the United States. I want to tell you the president of the Republic of Kenya 
should have an office all the time, anywhere, anyhow. This jet from Kenya to the United States called KQ does not have any of that. He should be able to write a letter anytime, make calls anytime, receive email anytime. That you cannot do when you share a flight with people taking Omena to their relative the United States and sharing the ladder coming out. Please, let us be sensible even for once. Secondly is to congratulate His Excellency the President for this appointment. Like uh, Honorable Agoya has said, we were appointed CSS last year, but so far we have not taken office, but we hope we will. And of course, to congratulate my friend, uh, Honorable Uta. I just have two points to make, very brief ones. The chief guest, you know that uh, you are our Minister for Foreign Affairs, and you do know that since the Second World War, the architecture and objective of diplomacy has changed. We no longer spend so much money on espionage and looking how to strengthen our armed forces, but diplomacy has become more of a trade and commerce issue, inviting investments into the country. Because once you invite investments, we will get jobs for our young people, we will get money, and therefore we will be able to get our military to grow and all those things. So Mweshimo Uta, uh, I want to speak to Mweshimo Uta, please. Mweshimo Uta, Kithi Egypt, Gimwakwai, Ni Penji Gienta Ngoma Nyalubiru Mondo Konjo Kenya, Mondo Konjo Luo, Mondo Konjo Nyando, Mondo Konjo Kenya Duto. Lastly, uh, you are uh, the Right Honorable. We as Lewis, we are very unique. In fact, the name Kisumu comes from a unique practice found only among the Lewis called Kisuma. Kisuma simply means when you don't have food, you send people to far areas and then they bring food and we never charge. And one of the things Lewis would do when they send you, because communication was difficult, they would ask you, find out how those people who have so much food, what they are doing, which we are not doing. Uh, Mweshimo Uta, go to Egypt as Jakisuma and find out what Egypt is doing, which Kenya is not doing. I say this, uh, guest of honor, because Egypt is a big country, almost 1 million square kilometers. Kenya is just under 600,000 square kilometers. Egypt has a population of almost more than twice the population of Kenya at 111 million. Nearly 95% of Egypt is a desert. But in Kenya, only 60% is classified as arid and semi-arid. But despite that, you are, Mr. Guest of Honor, only 3 million hectares of Egypt is arable. To put it in context, the surface of Egypt, which is arable, is just the size of Turkana County. But in spite of only 3 million hectares being arable, Egypt produces 10 million metric tons of wheat annually. That is enough wheat to feed the people of Kenya for five years. Egypt produces 8 million metric tons of rice annually. That is enough rice to feed the people of Kenya for eight years. Egypt produces enough maize at our 70 kilogram per capita for every Kenyan to feed the people of Kenya for two years. Egypt is also the leading producer of orange, the leading producer of grapes, the leading producer of potatoes, the leading producers of dry onions. I think Mwashimiwa Kili Kucho, Penjejo Egypt, Wonge P, Wonge Koth, Angomomi Ungi Chimu Moromojo Uduto. One one gi pika no kapi riembo manaji. But Mr. Speaker, what I'm asking him, I him ask the Egyptians. They have no water, they have no rain. How come they are able to feed Kenya for several years? As here in Kano, the only problem we have is perennial floods every year. I say this because you know, Your Excellency, food security is a national security issue. When you have food, there's less conflict in families. When you have food, children are able to go to school. When you have food, our well-being increases. Your Excellency Uta, Kivikuro, Wabendi Luongwa, 
Abendi yudu na kamanya lupu ndegadi ambuchieba wagomba kakuro.